literally the end of the week, uh, AAA shows up with this just basket case. Oh, it didn't look like this. Not at all, not at all. No, it was, it was, I was back to square one. What I didn't want to do was build another truck. My experience, I knew that I was gonna have to invest blood, sweat, and tears into the truck again, which I didn't want to do. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Motive Anatomy. Today we have Jason. Jason, thank you so much for making the time for us. So tell us, what do you drive? I drive a 1963 Chevy C10, short bed, big back window. Big back window, cool. Yes. So tell us, when did you pick it up and, and why a C10? Um, I know a lot, of, uh, a lot of people a few years back were starting to build the C10s and uh, I'm, a, I'm a car builder, a painter, and um, thought I'd uh, have a crack at it since uh, parts were getting, you know, available and uh, um, they were just they were coming up big so I decided to do one um, and uh, yeah went on the uh, went on the search to find one and you've always been to trucks um, I no never been into trucks I've always loved trucks but mm -hmm. I always loved the classics the builds uh, um, the whole aspect of building something and creating something um, basically restoring something that used to be into what it should be right so and, and make it better your, adding your taste to it adding a, a lot of taste to it yeah i i don't like the normal i don't like stock it's yeah we don't we don't around we here. don't like stock no <laughs> so they so you pick it up what was the vision for it the vision was uh to go with the patina patina rat rod style um i went i was on the other side of the spectrum where um, it created a monster in me where uh, you have something so nice you don't want anybody near it. So I, so I, um, back in the day, my other cars, um, they were so clean and pristine that I didn't want anybody near it. So it created like uh, this evil spirit in me where I was even lashing out to my kids when they were little back in the day. Now they're older, but, and I didn't want that. And um, I wanted something where if, if I took it to the store, a shopping cart hit it, you know what, you didn't hurt it, you just added to it. You're not gonna hurt my truck. You might get, need a tetanus shot, but, <laughs> but you know what, it's not, you're not gonna hurt the truck at all. You're gonna add to it. So I just wanted a patina style. Um, the truck started really, really, really ratty, but it was, uh, everything was completely black like the guy just went completely black on it everything was black i got tired of the whole building thing because uh you put so much blood sweat and tears in a in an automobile and um at the end of the day when you try to sell it to get rid of it you never get back what you put in um no amount of money can can repay um just time you can never get that stuff back exactly, yeah. so living and learning I wanted to have a truck done and complete and shown up at my front door <laughs> so um, yeah it started the truck started in Bakersfield um, I got together with a company that uh, was legitimately doing C10s and building them out um, they were legit after after going through the whole process of finding the truck, locating the truck, we uh, created a, a friendship business bond uh, within a course of uh, you know, almost a half a year. Uh, he knew what I wanted, we were on the same page. He found the truck, um, he's like, I can make this thing look great, and I'm like, you know what, I trust you, you've done, you've done enough of them. Um, so he found one, um, Probably a quarter into the build, uh, something happened with the company and my, my build and a few others kind of got lost. Um, within 
uh, course of uh, six months, I uh, didn't know where my truck was. I didn't know if I was going to get it back. I, I didn't. I had already invested money into it, and I lost all contact. So, uh, long story short, I th I threatened him politely because um, I knew he was seeing my responses, my everything, my contacts. He knew I was bugging. I'm sure he was getting a lot of people down his throat. Long story short, I threatened him politely. I said, I'm, you're, I'm giving you a week to send me the truck back. Yada, yada, yada. And I already had the pink slipper and everything. Um, didn't hear from him all week. Literally the end of the week, uh, AAA shows up with this just basket case. Oh, it didn't look like this. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. No, it was, it was, I was back to square one. What I didn't want to do was build another truck. And I was already out a little bit of money. A little bit of money. Yeah, let's go with a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of money. <laughs> and by the look of it and my experience, my experience, I knew that I was going to have to invest blood, sweat, and tears into the truck again, which I didn't want to do. And, you know, thank God my wife forgive me because I did it under her nose. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> Don't do it. Be honest. <laughs> Be honest with everything. So, yeah. Backfire. Long story short, it's not black. It's not black. It's huh? not black. It's completely different. So, so then let's get in it. Tell us about the front end. What do we have going on? The front end is, uh, this is um, Smash Hit Grill. Uh, back in the 30s and 40s, they used to have these uh, guards that would push hay, I'm, I'm assuming, hay and get the cows and everything out of the way on the farm. That's so cool. Um, and they started to put them on these trucks um, to rat rot them out. It just added a few, a few little uh, flavors to it. So I found one and uh, put it on the truck just to kind of complete it. Um, the fog lights are regular, uh, regular fog lights. Um, redid the, uh, redid the lights so they're. Uh, LEDs inside, so they're pretty bright. Um, basically, the rest is was just a stock else, truck. What, what, was everything else with the truck, the grill and everything, or did you have to outsource a lot of different things? Um, the bumper is not the original bumper on the truck. I found the bumper um, at uh, the Pomona Swap Meet, which is like the greatest place for yeah. junk. Yeah. For your cars. They're gold junk. Gold junk, it yeah. The, it, it is for the appropriate truck. It is for the appropriate truck. It is for 1963. I found the, the front bumper and the rear bumper both there. Um, the clearance lights I added myself. Uh, they weren't a part of the truck. Um, they're off of uh, a camper that I gutted out the lights and put uh, LEDs inside there. So I did the wiring myself. Um, they are operable, so they work. Everything works on the truck. Awesome. And then the wheel and tire setup, what do we have going on? The wheel and tire setup, um, Will Smith out of Corona uh, did some uh, rims for me and powder coated them to take the offset of the wheel wells so it actually tucks in there as much as possible. Right now, Right now, the, the truck is aired out and the tire is actually sitting on the fender wall of the truck. Nice. So, yeah. That's good uh, measurement. Yeah, that's very good measurement. So it tucks in just perfectly in there. Um, when it's aired out, it sits nice and perfect so the, so the wheels don't camber or butterfly. It sits just right on there perfectly. And I didn't want that. Camber lip. I didn't want that camber lip. Not for this, guys. Not for this. Not for this, yeah. And uh, what kind of suspension are you running? <laughs> Suspension is uh, it's just an air ride lift kit, uh, four bags, all the way around. Um, that's about it. The power steering, I got I put a power steering in there, so it it turns really really nice. Got rid of the manual. So you just wanted to add some nice amenities. I wanted to make a truck that was comfortable enough to drive and and easy enough to turn for my daughter to drive it. Because right now I. Because before you would have to use both hands in your knee to actually turn the truck. <laughs> so, so with the with the power steering unit, it just 
You, you can just, you can turn it with your pinky. Easy. It's so easy, yeah. And the uh, side exit exhaust? The side exit exhaust, um, a good buddy, Gavin, out of uh, uh, Shock Culture Customs, rerouted my exhaust. He did a lot of the stuff to the, to the truck after the fact that, you know, I'm so busy and, you know, wanted something done. Um, he did the exhaust. He rerouted the uh, exhaust to go through the frame under the cabs and out the side because when the truck is aired out, it was sitting on the uh, exhaust manifolds. Gotcha. So I had to shorten everything up for it to actually sit um, on the frame. As low as you can as low as I can possibly go. Hurting some of it. Yeah. As low as I can possibly go. I love what you, uh, what you guys did with the bed. Tell us a little about the thought process because I know it can be a very, you can go do so many different ways with the bed, but I actually really like the, the, the style and the little uh, accents. Thing. Yeah, the mm -hmm. accents that you've added. Um, tell us your thought process when going with this type of style. Um, I wanted to keep, I wanted to keep the majority of the bed intact with, you know, um, I didn't want to lose a lot of the uh, the space. Like they do, they they redo the whole frame. They they kind of get dis they get rid of the bed, which a truck is known for its beds. Right. So I wanted to just raise it enough to where the rear end wouldn't uh, wouldn't impede, and I wouldn't have to cut in between the wheel wells. And so it's just the frame is just C notched. Right. It's just uh, it's not a major C notch because I wanted to keep. Like I said, it pretty much stock, Useful. yeah. But still use it as a as a truck. Um, yeah, the wood planking. Now, when I got it back, mind you, it all it was was the outside. It didn't have it didn't have the the planking. In construction, um, I found some planking uh, at a job site, and um, luckily they make the rails aftermarket. So I patinaed the rails to match the truck because the rails are new. Um, and just, uh, it's basically a wood floor turned into a, a bed. That's awesome. And then just added the, uh, wanted to keep the whole 60s kind of style going. So back in the day before, uh, before they made the actual flares, they made uh, smudge pots. And what they were is they were little kerosene filled canisters that if you broke down on the side of the road, we didn't, they didn't have lights on the highways like they did so they needed to have these kerosene pots called smudge pots and they would light them and put them on the side so so they wouldn't get you know okay. they wouldn't get hit so that was uh in between the flare stage and then uh yeah an old uh just keep the whole oldness kind of tied in we love it yeah all so right. it's all the bed's only raised it's only raised about four inches oh, okay. so that's i that's the only thing I compensated is, is just four inches of, I just shorted it four inches, that's it. It's all by the interior, if you don't mind. Yep. All right, so, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, now. Now. Now, <laughs> yeah. You gotta remind ourselves, right? Yeah, the... Um, Tell us, what do we have going on in the interior, man? The interior is uh, just basic stock, 1963 components and stuff. Um, it was black, so I had to patina everything inside the cab to coincide with the outside. So the same, same thought process, the rattle can, the uh, squirt bottle with uh, you know, 22,000 grit sandpaper. Um, the seat's been reupholstered, uh, new carpet. Um, and mind you, they got, a lot of new, they got a lot of stuff for the C10s now. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty ready to get. Um, still keeping the 60s style. I got some, uh, some more reflectors, 1960 light. Uh, the box in the center is actually a Bluetooth unit. It's a suitcase turned into a Bluetooth unit. So, That's cool. so uh, say you go to a car show, you do something like that. Um, you don't want to run the risk of wearing out your battery. Um, I got this uh, Bluetooth suitcase that still kept the whole nostalgia part. Put a 700R4 tranny in it, um, automatic. 
Um, a guy out of Virginia redid my um, my instrument panel. You give him you give him the bones of what was in there, and he sends you uh, restored. And uh, that AC unit is um, is period correct too, but it doesn't work. I just did it just for no this. way. That's cool. It's just for sheer aesthetic, just for, hey, turn on the AC. Oh, okay, well, roll down the window. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's just in there just to, uh, just to, to show what was there, Definitely. what was an option for these trucks back, back in the day. So the engine, it's a 350 small block with the four barrel uh, Edelbrock carb. Um, basically nothing nothing to it. It's uh, old old reliable. Old reliable, we like that. Um, just uh, something that came with the truck and we just, uh, just kind of refreshed it up. So okay. the only thing I really added was the, uh, was the power steering and the 700 R4 tranny. Um, because the transmission that was in there was like a T3, it was, it was, it ran like a tractor, and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel like, I, I needed, I needed a little more pep. Definitely. And uh, added the, uh, the air raid siren, just to uh, let people know that, you know, I'm coming. Jay's coming by. Jay's coming by. Nice. So yeah, it's um, all everything's been rewired, so. Uh, all the instrument gauges work, everything works, even the cigarette lighter works on this truck. No way. Yeah, so everything, I had to get everything working. You did it properly, man. I had to, I had, I was, um, I didn't want to do it. I didn't twice. want to do it twice, yeah. three times, four times. So yeah, two years later, uh, two years later it, uh, it finished. Um, future plans? Um, no, I just want to just want to drive the heck out of it. This is probably the you know, probably the last classic that I'll do cuz I now I just want to enjoy it. I the plan that backfired on me, I don't I learned my lesson. So we're just going to keep this and drive it and maintain it and pass it on to the next generation of builders and they can lose their marbles on it. So um Big shout out, I guess, to um, my buddy Gavin at Shock Culture. He, uh, I found uh, a good friend in him. Uh, he was, uh, he came, he came at the right time. Let's just say he had, he had something that needed to be addressed, and I had something that needed to be addressed. And you know, you can't, you can't beat um, friends that know things and that you can actually trade work with and at the end of the day you're like everybody's just everybody wins Definitely. so yeah big big huge shout out to gavin he did a lot of the uh finishing touches on this truck like uh as far as as far as mechanical wise um the bed frame the the uh airbags uh the disc brakes just just a lot of he he took he took care of me Definitely. he's a he's a he's a good good hot rod builder so yeah, else? Uh, my wife for uh, just putting up with the the whole thing. I know it was an eyesore for her for a while, but uh, <laughs> she enjoys cruising in it. She enjoys cruising in it, and uh, yeah, and everybody else for uh, for watching this. Thank you, thank you for making the time for us, um, and for you, of course. No, I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you for being so friendly and, and, and opening up your, your build to us because it's definitely a, a labor of love and I'm glad it worked out, it, it, but it's a good lesson. Thank you for sharing that because you got we it. are all vulnerable of getting into a situation like that. So thank you so much. Keep it on the road. All reliable. Yes. Like it. Thank you, man. Take care, man.